Dr. Omar Awan is a physician and senior public health contributor for Forbes. He joins me now from Baltimore in Maryland. Thank you, doctor, for being with us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So as the Trump administration seeks to make big government cuts, three judges are now blocking some of President Trump's plans, and that includes about $4 billion in medical research funding cuts for universities, hospitals, and other scientific institutions. What would be the consequences of research funding cuts of this magnitude if the president, if the president is able to bypass the judiciary and make these massive cuts in the end? Well, the major driver for research is money and funding. And without adequate funding, it's hard to do high quality research. And it's really because of research that we've made so many amazing advancements in science and medicine. I mean, if you think about it, we have an oral pill that can cure hepatitis C because of research. We have antiviral therapy for HIV because of research. And now people can live normal lives. I mean, if you remember, 30 or 40 years ago, having HIV was essentially a death sentence. And even more recently, I think something that everyone can relate to is the life of the late President Jimmy Carter, where immunotherapy drugs really saved his life. And he was able to beat cancer, melanoma, which is a type of skin, skin cancer that he had because of these immunotherapeutic drugs. And these are drugs that prime our immune systems to fight cancer. So it's had a tremendous effect on the quality of life of so many Americans, so many people around the world, and it will certainly have devastating consequences for science and for, you know, cultivating innovation. And how much more critical is medical research funding, especially in the wake of a global pandemic where we were all made particularly aware of just how vulnerable we are? Very important and very critical when you think about how much research plays a role in the development of vaccines, particularly. I mean, you know, vaccines save lives. And, you know, even in the COVID-19 pandemic, which is just very recent, four or five years ago, we know that vaccines have saved more than 14 million lives with just COVID-19. And we're not talking about other vaccines. So we're able to develop these life-saving vaccines because of research. And to hinder that and to take funding away from that, particularly billions of dollars, is very disheartening, quite frankly, for the science, the medical community, and everyone. Everyone should really feel outraged by, you know, the lack of funding here. Uh, that actually takes us to my next question. You know, what about uh, President Trump's pick for Secretary of Health and Human Services, Robert Kennedy Jr.? What impact could he potentially have on the American population, given his vaccine skepticism, and of course, other plans that he has for his own department? Well, I think it could have Devastating consequences, no doubt. I mean, he is a known vaccine skeptic, as you've just stated, Rosemary. And, you know, that type of rhetoric results in vaccine hesitancy and people getting afraid to get vaccinated. But we know that vaccines save lives. And when that happens, then vaccine rates fall, herd immunity gets threatened, and then diseases that were thought to be eradicated come back, just like what's happening with measles. And even now, recently in Texas, we just heard about, you know, 10 or 15 people getting measles. And these are all entirely preventable if we get vaccinated. And this type of rhetoric, I'm afraid, will spread and we'll start to see more and more preventable diseases that come and start to get people sick. So I think this could have very negative consequences for public health moving forward. And doctor, what about the likely future of Medicaid? What does President Trump plan to do to it? And what are the likely consequences of his plans? Well, he has said that he is for Medicaid, but what the problem is is that he also has this domestic agenda where he wants to make a lot of cuts and s save money. So congressional Republicans are now considering different avenues to make Medicaid cuts, like, for example, adding a work uh, requirement for Medicaid, and that can get millions of people out of Medicaid and coverage, like things like you know dental coverage or vision coverage, and that will be a problem because the people that benefit from Medicaid are those that can't even afford insurance to begin with. So we're talking about, you know, poor people, we're talking about low income individuals, people with disabilities, they may not get the coverage that they need and the, that they deserve to stay healthy. And this is a real problem when you're considering billions and trillions of dollars of cuts with Medicaid. And this is going to affect the most vulnerable populations here in America. And we really need everyone to be healthy in America in order for us to be uh, prosperous going forward. Dr. Omar Awan, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, Rosemary.